Hello. Hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Shift. Thank you for joining us again. Um, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment. We've gotten so many really cool comments. Somebody left one that really touched me. I didn't see it till this morning. And they were like, you know, this is like one of the best podcasts. And like, y'all are so smart. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> I do really enjoy talking about the show and breaking it down, especially with Tanya. So that's really. Yay. Thank you so much for saying that. Yeah. how's your week been it's been a whirlwind it's been pretty busy um but you know i feel pretty positive um uh for those of you who don't know or are watching i um launched my campaign officially on social media mm -hmm. and so got a lot of positive comments and thank you to tracy um for sharing and encouraging folks to donate um got some great donations in so i'm super excited still a long way I think I'm one of the first to really publicly announce. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, still a long journey to go. and um, But I'm looking forward to actually sitting down and talking to people. Um, I think that's the best part is being able to talk about how to be more engaged, how to be more involved, what's happening in local government. I've always liked doing that, even when I was just on social media, on Twitter, live tweeting. So this is more in-person um, so I'm excited to do more of that over the summer. Yeah, you know what's what's really funny for people who might not and might not know. I think I told this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm my throat. Um, so I met Tanya on Twitter because Tanya used to live tweet all of the city council meetings. So when I first moved to Oakland, I would like, and I'd have to go to meetings and like sometimes I'd have to speak. I would follow along on Tanya's Twitter <laughs> while I was sitting in the chambers because I was like, what are they talking about up in here? Because <laughs> yeah. I was so new to the city. And so I followed along Tanya's social media and I, I don't know, I just like wanted, I just like love talking about that because I think the civic engagement is so important and like, the whole idea of democracy is really about like all parts of it. So mm -hmm. Taya is like who used to like break down kind of the more complicated like relationships and dynamics and stuff I missed. Um, and so when I when I wanted to do a podcast, I like knew Tanya because Tanya used to also tweet about GH. <laughs> so I hit Tanya up like, excuse me, um, I've been noticing your tweets about the government and about General Hospital. <laughs> podcast about that yes i i i was literally i was going to city council meetings and sitting at the media desk like i was a professional journalist and i would just sit there and just live tweet the whole thing and it was it was one of the most fun things i did voluntarily um i gained the, a lot of my followers just from that alone and you know the the social media community cared a lot about me because I was young at the time and I was just riding my bike back and forth to city yeah. hall and they'd be like tweet us when you get home <laughs> you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so it was you know great and it was yeah it was the most fun part uh you know that I, part of my journey mm -hmm. um so yeah I'm looking forward to being able to do more of that and less so on social media but just talking to people face to face mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. I, I think it's just important to remember because like there's so much overwhelming toxic stuff on social media. Yes. There's mm -hmm. also like really beautiful community and like people mm -hmm. that you meet and who become like lifelong friends and all yes. of that. Um so I just I just love that. Thank <laughs> you. Um this week for me, me. this yeah. week for me was busy. Really, really mm. busy. Um, I've gotten back into doing a lot of like uh, virtual trainings, which oh, wow. I didn't realize how much I love. So I was like, you know, I've done like about a bunch of campaign work. So I'm working with this organization to like train new campaigners because um, I was like, I don't want to work on these campaigns anymore. Like I'll do stuff for like friends like you. I had a friend who I helped with his campaign a couple like 
few months ago. But when it comes to like that big stuff, like every day, I don't want to do that anymore. But being able to like talk to people and like teach them skills and then also to learn from them and have that like give and take and back and forth was like really fulfilling. Um, but very, very long. I had three separate trainings on top of my other work this week. So Oh, wow. I'm just like, yeah, it just like, I watch a lot of GH, old GH, and also um, old All My Children. Uh, yeah, I don't miss all my children. I miss Adam Chandler. <laughs> That yeah. messy mess. I loved him. Yes, loved it. And, Because he and, is so talented. He made you like be so mad at Adam Chandler, but love Stuart. Well, Stuart, right. David Canary was amazing, you know, when he rested Mm-hmm. in peace, but he was, he was, he was it. Um, like I, I think there was like at at the time there was like three really top um uh, male actors and David Canary was one of them along with Eric Braden and I think someone from Days of Our Lives I don't know what his name is but I guess he played Victor Yeah, him <laughs> and him yeah and the him and the actor who played Stefano, but like they were. oh yes they were yeah all of them were top tier classic um lead actors in the genre and so yeah. definitely missed him I also missed the shenanigans on all my children of Kendall and Greenlee um yeah they were they were awesome If y'all haven't watched All My Children, and I think a lot of people <laughs> who listen to us have, but All My Children, yeah please don't please don't report these YouTube videos now because I know that there's been a lot of people cite a lot of people whose videos got taken down. But they have like oh <laughs> long okay videos. So I this weekend unplugged from everything but YouTube and watched um the baby switch. So you remember when they did the crossover with Oh, yes. All My Children One Life? Mm. Yes. I said, I remember I hated Babe Chandler for a reason. Right. And oh, my God. <laughs> And poor Bianca. Oh. they were soaping. <laughs> They were yes. soaping back then. Really. Um, that story That's went on for too long, but that yeah. payoff was like on point. Mm Huge. hmm Huge. Mm hmm. Yes. So. It also reminded me, and this is also to get into GH, like, I went back and, like, watched the beginning, like, when Sunny first got back from Nixon Falls and was like, oh, that payoff is not there. <laughs> um, No, it was not. And we had written a script for the payoff and they did not, I mean, the GH writers did not text us, did not con consult with us. I mean, they're missing out on great opportunities for great stories. So, you know, new writers don't sleep on GH Sunday shift because we got some great ideas here. <laughs> Hit us up. I'm mad at the writers this week. We'll get into <laughs> oh it. yes But tell us who was your, like, let's transition from all my children because we could talk about that forever. Green Leo forever. Um, right greatly <laughs> forever. Okay. Um, forever but let's talk about who was your performer of the week this week on GH. well um a lot going on this week and so I do have always lots of performers I can I never knew you had have a list. just one <laughs> right um first up give it up to Vernie Watson Woo she went off and she you know basically carried all of the anger feelings and frustration black women involved in medicine um and just put it all out there Mm I hmm really appreciated you know what she had to say not only to you know in the office with Kevin but also to Tracy um And a lot, especially women of privilege, well, anyone of privilege, really, not just casually, you know, blowing off something that so many people do not have access to. I, you know, I was so appreciative of, you know, Stella just like letting it out and going off on That's her. right. So, um, yeah, Bernie, yay. Um, I also have to give it to Amanda Sutton. Mm hmm for going off on both Jagger and Lucy. <laughs> I appreciated that so much. And it was funny, like I noticed something like when um, Brooklyn goes to visit Chase in a, um, a police station and, you know, Chase was, you know, talking to the little kids and the little kids were leaving. 
and the little one little boy gave Brooklyn a high five. I was like, shout out to that little boy. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, basically Brooklyn, you know, went off on Jagger for you know trying to interrogate um, Danny um, without having a parent in the room, and then you know Lucy was hella tripping. We'll talk about that. But you know, letting Lucy know that you know you, she she's the one that always tries to take over uh, what's happening at Deception. She doesn't consult anybody. And, you know, and she's representing her family, the quarter main. And so really appreciate it. And Amanda Sutton's performance this week. And if I, like, again, third day in the row, third week in the row, but Kristen Storms, man, looking fierce and standing up for herself against Lucy as well. Um, I don't know what's going on with Drew and Nina, but I really, really hope that if deception fails, that, you know, Maxi can go back to Crimson because that's where everything started for her professionally and I think she has the experience and the chops and the know-how to really continue bringing that magazine um, up in circulation. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, you know, those are my actors, actresses, Bernie, Amanda, and Kirsten Storm. I mean, there's you can't go wrong. We have, it's, <laughs> I'm just always reminded how strong the actresses on our show are. Um, it's mm -hmm. just like an embarrassment of riches for like yes. the we have. Um, side note, I am team, Lu team Lucy and I want to get into that with you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, but other people, I think that did a really good job. I think that uh, Robert Gossing and um, I was going to say Kevin Collins. <laughs> Yeah. His name, John Lindstrom. Um, John Lindstrom. John Lindstrom did really great. I feel like they played really well off of each other in that scene. That was probably like my top scene of the week. It was just like the active listening of Kevin while like Black Hospital was in his, in his uh, office going off. I just right. felt like it was a masterful scene. I said, look at all these, look at all these like Emmy winning performances and Curtis in this room. Like this was amazing. Hey. You know I'm not lying. And Curtis. <laughs> Emmy performances Emmy and, and, Curtis. and Curtis. Um, and then I thought, um, ugh, despite, and we'll get into like how annoyed I was with Joss this week. I thought as an actress, like just that part where she came into the kitchen and went to Laura Wright and was like, I need my mom, like just broke me. I was like, oh, her voice broke. It was beautiful mm -hmm. and sad yeah. knowing like what's going on in her life. Um, mm -hmm. So I felt like that was really, really great. Um, and then my little Danny, you know, my Jason baby was really right. doing what needed to be done this week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like that. Yeah, I definitely love the interaction between Brooklyn and Danny. Um, oh, so good. He's, yeah, he's doing really well um, given the, you know, basically super important storyline that he's involved in. He's showing up very well. Um, um Love Danny. Wish we could see more of Jake. Um, mm -hmm. but Danny, Danny has been more front and center because he's the one that found Jason. So yes, he's doing a wonderful job. And I think that that's like the, the key that you you honed into. Like right. um, I think that storyline wise and the way they're writing these characters, it makes sense for it to be Danny. But when mm -hmm. it comes to acting, like we know Hudson, who plays Jake, has so much experience. Yeah. Uh, again, if you have not watched his episode of Grey's Anatomy, he'll break your whole heart. He's so good. Mm -hmm. um, but like he has so much experience with these actors. He has so much experience on the show. And so like it, you know, like acting wise. It, they I'm, they could have chosen to make it Hudson because they know that he can handle it. Mm -hmm. Like Danny was pretty untested, and I think uh, the mm -hmm. actor, and I think that he's really shined through in these scenes. Like he's very funny. Um, mm -hmm. He has like really good chemistry with his family members. Um, yeah. Everybody seems to care about him and like want him to do a good job. Um, and I think that's just like such a, a like shows the caring of the cast and bringing mm -hmm. like this new younger cast member. So I've just been impressed um, by him, and and I am looking forward to seeing him and Jake play off of each other in the future. Yeah, and then I know like it's gonna come. He's gonna have some tough scenes to deal with when it comes to if Sam finds out that he was involved in this. Yeah, and having to navigate Sam's feelings. And his growing feelings for his dad 
I think it's going to be some really interesting scenes coming up. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, let's get into what happened this week to give Woo! us these performances. Uh, yeah. Let us start, let us just start with the Jex breakup, including Dex and all that snitching. Oh my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Nina obviously tells uh, Jocelyn, you know, alludes to something going on that she doesn't know. Dex like confesses to Joss that he um, was about to kill Cyrus. Joss can't take it, goes to tell Carly, like tries to read her about Jason. A mess. What a mess. How did you feel about it? I, I have lots of feelings, but how, how did you feel about it? Yeah, first of all, Nina, whatever Nina's motivation was, I still don't understand why she went over. I mean, I, she told um, Ava that she went over there because she couldn't reach Sunny, and so she goes to talk to Dex. Mm. Do you honestly feel that Dex is going to want to talk to you after you out him over what he did in the hospital? So th- she just, like, Nina herself just was like, I don't get her at all sometimes. I really don't. So come to the discussion between Joss and Dex. So it almost feels like she, she no, it doesn't almost. She was definitely in denial about what it means to be in love with someone that works for the mob. Now, on the one hand, she was correct. Dex did not act right when he got that order. He knew, and I think I said this in a previous podcast, he was working for Michael and Carly. Carly and Michael told him to come to us if you think Sonny is making any kind of sketchy decisions. And he didn't do that. As soon as he said whatever he said to Sonny in the office, like, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it. He should have ran to Michael and Carly and said, you know, they're, he's making me do this. What should I do? And they would have probably given him some good advice. But instead, he committed to going ahead and murdering Cyrus. So that, I believe, is why Joss is justified in her feelings because she was under the impression that he was actually going to actually just monitor Sunny, not do really dangerous and sketchy things. And so she, you know, got her, you know, high expectations of him just shot to hell when she found out that he actually was going to do it. And it was Sunny that stopped him. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, it broke her heart. She made, and she's, I think she's definitely, um, more in like she's definitely Jax's daughter in the sense that there's okay. some things that she there's some things that Jax says he won't uh, he, he won't abide by even though he's done some really sketchy stuff too but at the same time she's holding on to her own moral compass and saying okay I know I'm part of this family there's some things I gotta accept but I will not accept murder for no reason and that's the line that she's not going to cross and so she was just like i'm done it's Mm -hmm. over and it was very powerful very emotional and like yeah you're right Edie mccoy she turned in a very um emotional and powerful performance that i feel is a whole ass punk first of all (laughs) (laughs) okay i understand your heart is broken (laughs) you know you just got numb but what the hell? Why are you gonna go running to Anna <laughs> selling all the beans? I don't I mean you not only threw Sunny under the bus, but basically you're hurting your ex, Joss, and Michael, and all and the mom, all of them under the bus. And for what? For what? I don't I don't get it. You're putting your, you're putting yourself in jail. You're putting Sunny at risk, you're putting everybody at risk. Why? And it just like he's so like it shows his youth and immaturity that Ooh. he would just go ahead and do all of that. So, um, yeah, side eye to you, Dex. Side eye. You reading, <laughs> like, Dex, is giving me my life. Like, I so, <laughs> so I will say that you are definitely more generous to Joss than I am. I thought Joss <laughs> sounded ridiculous. And I love <laughs> my girl. You know, Joss, I'll be saying that's my little white niece. 
<laughs> I was like, Josh, what are you talking about? You met Dex, or like part of the way you like saw him for the first time was beating up the pap with, with paps with Sunny. Hey. Yeah, so like but... this idea that like he wouldn't do something to somebody who was I get being upset about it I don't understand pretending like this is something that you just could not believe I think and this like goes to me with like the mistakes they do in right and like how, the disservice they do in writing the character of Jocelyn mm -hmm. um because I think Eden gets a lot of stuff that's like ridiculous and elevates it but with Joss, I'm like, what do y'all be doing to her? <laughs> like, I, I would have liked her to say something along the lines of, I convinced myself that this was okay and that I was okay with it. Mm -hmm. But when I found this thing out, it shattered the bubble I was living in. And I really, and you can't, and I couldn't turn back into pretending like this was okay. Mm -hmm. Because I think mm -hmm. if she would have named that like what she was thinking didn't make sense, I could have understood it more. But just like, I, you could never. Yes, he could have. What are you talking about? And I hear you he, with the like, he should have called Michael. He should have called Carly. I, I get that. And I think that his reaction to her saying that was like, yeah, but if it, it was either him or me. And at the same time, he did point it out. He's like, I've killed before. So it wasn't like, it's not within him to do it again. Right. So she should have known that. So I think that for me, that was the part that was just kind of silly. I think that there are things that they have her do that are just so quick and you don't get to like see her point of view. I mean, I want to take it back to even the idea because Eden actually did an interview on Soap Opera Digest. I meant to send it to you, so I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. But they had asked her about, like, the cam thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's been a year. It's been, what, two years now? Why are y'all asking her about this? And it was like, well, social media fans were really upset. Yeah, of course they were. Because the show had written Cameron as a little angel. And they mm -hmm. did it. They did everything they could to heighten the drama of, like, the plot. But they didn't do anything to draw out, like, the point in character. So... Mm -hmm. It was like, here you have Cameron, who is now like Mr. Perfect, taking care of his kids, or, you know, his, taking care of his kids, his his brothers, <laughs> aka his kids, working, like going to school, being Mr. Perfect, being a good friend, actually mm -hmm. being one of the few supports to Spencer, who's also a popular character. Like, you write him perfect, and then you have Jocelyn going out, like, falling in love with a mobster and then cheating on him. Now, again, mm -hmm. and I said this at the time, if you would have had her talk about, you know, because we haven't heard about the sex tape since it happened. Since Spinelli supposedly deleted it from the internet forever, <laughs> like, we haven't heard about it. We don't know any implications that it continues to have for her life. So how could you give her a story like this and then act like it has no implications for her? And for her, if she would have even named, granted, we know people are sexist, like women can't make those kind of mistakes. I, people were calling for Cameron to cheat on Jocelyn with Esme. He would not have gotten dragged. I mean, this is before she, you know, did her thing. But like any of her things, particularly Drug and Trina. But we know that he would not have gotten dragged through the mud for that the way Jocelyn got dragged through the mud for dra for cheating on Cameron. Like, people would not still be asking him that question two years later. Mm -hmm. Right. Because Spencer didn't ever get asked why you was, uh, like, pursuing Trina. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why like, you were sleeping was, with Esme, yeah. Right. That like, that, that, yeah. that wasn't, like, it. it is based on her being a woman or, like, you know, right. a young woman, right? And right. It, it is what it is. And it was based on her being a young woman and Cameron being beloved. Mm -hmm. So instead of being like, oh, I, you know, this thing happened to me and all of my consent and I was violated and, all, you know, I, I was violated in this way. And every time I looked at Cameron, I was reminded of it and I wanted to get over it. And then Dex represented this like, way to be free the sexual freedom is like the the first time i felt comfortable being that way i'm not saying she wouldn't have gotten dragged but i'm saying that that would have made sense for her character to talk about 
And so they continue to do this to Joss over and over again. That like even with the even with Jets when they first started, it was like, okay, we gotta be careful because Sonny is gonna whatever. And then Sonny was like, I don't care about this. So you had them spend all this time this and, and we knew every we all were like, Oh yeah, if Sonny find out he's gonna be mad for him to be like, No. Mm-hmm. So now they look stupid. Right. So like they keep doing this thing to Joss where they like, I, I think that we are seeing this week like a very clear um delineation between the last writers and the new writers and mm-hmm. instead of like explaining or trying to like um trying to like transition they're just flipping things it's the same thing we saw with Anna um but they're doing it on the backs of characters that they haven't done a good enough job of like giving point of view and, and like a real point of view like and explaining what's happening so I was just really frustrated at Jocelyn I was really fr- frustrated at the writing of it um, because it could have been different with the same outcome right yeah definitely I think um I do see the delineation between um the the, the old and the new writers but also feel like it's almost kind of her decision to draw a line again still relates to how Jax is. Jax can flip mm-hmm. off with the best. And that is not necessarily behavior she learned from Jax, but it's definitely shades of Jax in that. <laughs> in that. <laughs> so, I mean, it is a function of the writers writing her crazy, but it's also a function of, you know, she's her daddy's child. So it kind of just all kind of, you know. So, girl, you just like your daddy. <laughs> Right. <laughs> which I don't think she has a lot she is it, that's always interesting when people call her like mini Carly because I'm like I'll be saying a lot of jacks up in there yeah <laughs> like, definitely I'm the part of, the part that makes me like her is the Carly part but that's some jacks right. up in there <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> that behavior that you side eye that's all jacks <laughs> I also agree with you about Dex and that snitching. I said, are you talking, are you telling everything? Are you talking to, are you telling on Carly? Hey, 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 you got me, you got me out. And I was like, he's just going to bring the whole house down and not give a damn. He's like that, um, what is it? That well, one, the little girl meme where she's just smiling and then there's a fire. Oh, yeah. Reminds me of that. And then also, that other meme where the dog is in a room full of fire and he's just like it's okay everything's okay everything's fine (laughs) everything's fine like i'm just like seeing it all and i'm just like i don't get you i didn't get it but i also feel like it's almost needed to happen for the plot so we are i don't know if we're going to transition to next to talking about anna but it almost feels like she needed to hear that in order to get her to a place where she can truly be the commissioner of police and not be sunny friend. I felt like that needed yeah. to happen. And so, so yeah, for the plot, fine. But Dex as a character, I don't like, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so here's, like, that's the thing that's so funny about GH mm-hmm. um, is that, you know, like Sunny is a criminal, but he's also right. like, the main character. So the stuff right. is like not necessarily wrong, but it's like, <laughs> It's wrong in this universe. Right. Um, and, so, and so I, I for the Anna and for the Dex thing, we can talk about like let we can transition to that. It was it was frustrating to me that that was the thing that like caused the divide. Because I right. I actually think it's weird because this is this was Sunny stopping it. Like he gave yes. it her and it wasn't as if some like outside force stopped it and then you had to go back to Sunny and was like well I couldn't do it because of whatever it was that Sunny was like you know what this was a mistake and that actually feels like a reason not to be mad so oh, the, yeah. the thing that made more sense to be mad at is him beating Cyrus almost to death in a church with his that, bare hands yes <laughs> because I kept thinking about that the, the, she's like I kept thinking that Sonny was greater than his parts and that he was different and all of that. And this was an example of him showing that. Him right. first reacting in anger and going out of control by beating him to death almost in the hospital. 
him still thinking like a mob boss that I need to get rid of this person so I don't have to go to jail. But because of the relationships he has in the community, I think it was the conversation he had with Christina that really made the turning point. Mm -hmm. But because of what he's learned about what it means to be a human being and living in a community and being somewhat honorable, he changed his mind. And so those are the reasons why people quote unquote love him and yet Anna is now deciding to hate him because of all that it just seemed really weird to me um that because I kept yelling I was like but he has changed he decided not to kill the man why are you why are you upset (laughs) even though you know as a monster he had every right to do that because that's what you got to do to keep on top but he chose not to do that Mm -hmm. um because also I think even though we really didn't see well, Laura doesn't know that. I don't know. Laura did. Laura was mad at him for beating up Cyrus. Um, but I don't know. I think in the back of his mind, also, I think his relationship with Laura was probably, well, in, in my head, in my writing, he's <laughs> thinking about Laura. And right. like, I, you know, I have relationships with these people. I can't just, you know, off them because I know Laura would have put two and two together and been like, <laughs> in a relationship with you you know everybody would have cut him off right time. right right <laughs> i agree with that i think um it, it just didn't make any sense and i love anna right. down yes. obviously um right. but even though i was like anna this is the person who when you were in your shades of gray yes who you go to right so and she said that she said that yeah i I actually relied on Sunny a lot. Yeah, but it, it, it's actually not that past tense. Like Sunny, right. like made sure that you and Valentine were safe and they're safe in his safe house, which is part of right. the reason I was kind of side eyeing Valentine in that conversation with Nina. But like he, yeah. made, he made sure you had a bodyguard. As a matter of fact, the reason that you shot Charlotte is because you skirted your bodyguard. Because if right. your bodyguard would have went in first, like it might have turned yeah. out different, and at least you wouldn't have shot her. Like, right. There has been so many times that it's just been like, oh, okay, well, I guess Anna is down with Sunny, and so that's why I never wanted him to be her to be commissioner in the first place. Mm-hmm. If she would have like a person who came on to take on a project or like a special task force or something like that, that wasn't about like completely keeping whatever. Right. Um, yeah, that's one thing. But this doesn't make any sense, and that flip flop was too much for me. Yeah. I will also say Dex coming in and confessing all of that and then being able to go out the door. I ain't forgot Ooh. that. I ain't Trina, never forget. I ain't forgot that Trina came in there to talk to y'all and she ended up getting locked up over her phone. Mm. Meanwhile, Dex like, yeah, I tried to kill us. Which also wasn't even attempted murder because like you didn't actually do it. Do it, I, it right. was just or like you didn't even try to do it. Sunny stop. I don't know. It was I didn't understand that. Whatever. <laughs> I <didn't like> it. <laughs> she let him walk out because it was unproven, but you can prove a black girl did anything with the tiniest bit of evidence. Oh, you better talk about <laughs> it. Let's talk about it. Um, substantial and hearsay and everything. They will throw a black person in jail over the tiniest bit. But you can't you can't have circumstantial evidence over a white dude mm. who's blonde and innocent looking and handsome. <laughs> Cannot have that. Well, we go to a GH for our <laughs> fantasy and there was too much reality in that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so. um, Anna and Jagger had their drink together. Um, when they talk, as we as we discussed, um, I'm just not impressed by Jagger. Anna. Not interested. Don't like it. Don't like him. Stay away from Anna. And I think that one sentence where he said, um, no matter what happened, Stone always felt like Sunny was more of a brother to him. And that's part of the reason why I hate him. I think that was supposed to elicit empathy in the audience, and it didn't. Not for me. Not for me. I was, like, I was like, so maybe you should recuse yourself. Exactly. You know, and maybe you should admit that, yes, he was more of a brother to him, to Stone, than you were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I would also say the other thing, especially going back to like how this is like the Cyrus thing was like the flip. And you know, I'm not a Sunny Defender by any means. <laughs> Right. um, <laughs> I drag Sunny every chance I get. But it also was like, I don't think anybody, any of us really relieve that Cyrus is like redeemed. We're actually like, it's like double Oh, no. dutch. Like we trying to jump in to figure out the story of what they're actually doing with Cyrus. So it's Right. like, I... How the, I mean, it's almost like people forget, one, we all know that Cyrus go to Sunny into that. We know this. Why is everyone not even considering the fact that this man, who who is a murderer, who is, you know, all of the things, It was totally innocent that Sonny just walked up on him and beat him up for no reason. That's not what happened. You all know that's not what happened. Well, he didn't deserve to get beat up like that. So He he didn't, was well, wilding. Sonny was wilding, but Cyrus does deserve a lot. Right, He may I mean, not because have been Cyrus beating had him up. everything to do with Drew getting beat up. This is what Getting I'm saying, Drew, that we've yeah. seen, we've seen so much. We also don't know what Cyrus knows um, from when he was in Pentonville because he took off his mic. So he might actually know that it's Jason. We don't actually know if Cyrus is in on any of this stuff. They have been, they've slow walked any explanation on what Cyrus is doing or who he is. Right. Yeah. And this, Yeah. they're, they're actually kind of sidelining him right now, which is a shame because, again, our idea is for him to have commentary via his podcast every week. I imagine Exactly. he has a lot to say over what's been going down and we're missing out. Again, writers hit us up. Mm hmm <laughs> That's right. yes. Um, I didn't, I meant to, I forgot to put in it, but let's talk about Dante's recovery. It's taking too long It's because taking too long, first of all. as, you know, as nurse love is supposed to be in there giving sponge badges, sponge baths, and it's not happening because he's still in a coma. I'm dissatisfied. <laughs> Something I'm noticing that I do like about what the writers are doing is Mm like -hmm. there there is some interconnectedness between scenes like something I don't know if you noticed this but like it was like Liz and Willow were talking and then Chase walked past or like Mm -hmm. Tracy and Stella were talking and then Ava went behind them so I do really like this idea that like it's it's not like Even things that are not necessarily um, together or connected in 100% in, in ways, we're still seeing a little bit of that overlap. And so I loved um, the uh, I loved the comment that Sam and Scout were sleeping in Olivia's bed. Um, Mm hmm and just like really showing that the quarter remains are actually a family and that like these people are part of like, this, you know, Sam is part of the extended family and all of mm that. hmm Um, so I do think... You know, even when um, my little LNL two baby, shout out to him, Aiden um, came and was like talking. He was just like, you know, when we do these game nights, and of course we would like to see it, but there's not a way that we can retroactively see that. Um, Right. so I'm glad that like they are reestablishing that there are very strong relationships here, and they don't have Yeah. to necessarily be made up. Like it's just like, oh, you remember when this thing happened? Um, Yeah. that. that it's possible for us not to have seen off camera unlike like molly and what's her name molly and christina's relationship that was like we were there we never saw that Right. Like this whole jealousy thing you have over Christina, that was never there. <laughs> right We've never seen it. So, yeah. <laughs> um so i did like that um i um uh, where's my other note Y'all, I'm just losing my mind. No note, I guess. Um, oh yeah, it's easy. It's also easy to forget that Tracy loves Dante. I really did Yeah. love that. Um, The scene that she had in the hospital with mm Sunny. -hmm. Mm That -hmm. was good. yeah. Um, yeah, I, so I again I do think it's time. I I was also a little sad that we didn't see um Sam this week. Um I it's it's a really weird. disconnect for me that we don't just see more people in the hospital like kind of like holding vigil by Dante as Mm opposed hmm Right. to like people being in and out in that way it's a little weird um but whatever Yeah.
We'll see more of that next week, I guess. Do we do we have an idea that that Dante's gonna wake up or no? Next week. I don't know when he's gonna wake up. No. I'm sure Dom is enjoying I'm sure Dom is enjoying getting his paycheck while just stoically sleeping. Right. I guess. (laughs) He's a very good sleeper. He's a very good um Good, co- oh good comatose goodness. spacer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I was I, I wanted a little bit more of that. I would have loved to like um uh, I don't I think Charlotte is back. I know she had hurt her leg. Um, but like some point of view of like, you know, her mom's in a coma yeah. and now Dante's in a coma. It's oh, just like yeah. those little those little things I think um they're trying to tell so much other story that right. they're like slow walking some things, like for example. Um, you know, Jason's return, like all that stuff feels slow walk to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get there, we talked about this uh as like performers of the week, but um Marshall, Stella, Kevin, and Curtis. Um, so the racist doctor <laughs> that um that gave Marshall his diagnosis is dead. Um, mm-hmm. and Kevin was kind of going through with the family, you know, the background of that. Um, and the I thought racist, like, the racist doctor that we really don't have confirmation it was him, but we're gonna pretend now it was him. We're gonna pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're like, yes. this is this is the thing. This is what we doing now. This is him. Right. Um, Stella's line, sign, sealed, and systemic. I said, I know that's right. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the the. I appreciate this conversation being had, but again, just a a, a, a critique in mm-hmm. that I really wish, well, I wish that Kevin had named it. I realized that Stella was the one that ended up naming it, but when he was talking about it, he was talking about it in the, you know, a, a, a calm and toned down way where he was saying, you know, there was anger and dislocation from the dominant cultural group, you know, societal injustices. And I'm just like, name that, name that it was racism, name that it was homophobia, name that it was sexism, because that's what it was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't these like broad descriptors. And that's what I was getting really impatient about. You know, yes, I do appreciate um, John Lynch's performance and Kevin always, he's always a great guy. But again, that kind of distance, um, indirect, passive aggressive way of talking about racism, talking about homophobia and sexism was getting to me. It was annoying me mm-hmm. now. Um, but it also demonstrates that racism has an effect on our bodies physically mm-hmm. and mentally Mm -hmm. to a point where yes um marshall felt like he needed to go to talk to someone professional because it was affecting him all this anger and you know um just dealing with the weight of racism it affects us and a lot of times black people don't know how to acknowledge that don't know how to go and, and and figure out how to help ourselves in that. That's interesting that Marshall thought that he should go to a mental health professional when many people in our culture don't. We mm. don't go to mental health professionals. We think Did that we can just him? take it. I don't remember. I think that he got arrested and the police made him go. Oh, the police made him go. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, again, we don't, even now, knowing what we know, we still, the majority of us, one don't have access to or two even if we do have access to we're not going to seek it um i'll even admit to myself i knew that i needed i probably needed to go to speak to a mental health professional just to deal with the stress i'm dealing with but i haven't i haven't been going because i haven't made the time to go Mm -hmm. as if i would make the time to go to a doctor if i'm in so much pain physical pain i would go Mm -hmm. I just can't handle that mental pain but I've learned to handle the anguish of systemic racism and stress Mm -hmm. and all of that I've learned how to navigate that not knowing that it can actually be affecting me physically as well Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's an important conversation that we should have 
And I'm glad that that conversation was had on television, even if I have some critiques about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I was feeling a lot of the same thing that you were feeling. And I was wondering, well, maybe they just don't want like Kevin to like white splain. <laughs> like yes. systemic stuff that to, like, is the also that too yeah. um, but it would have been important to know that he understood it and for him to name it right um right. i also appreciated marshall being like like because it was exactly what you were saying like the system gaslights us to believe yeah. like that we shouldn't take this seriously so he was like why wouldn't I be angry? They're like, oh, you're mad, you're angry. Well, yeah, the conditions around us make us angry. The anger mm -hmm. is not the problem. It's the way, it's like the way we deal with it. I've always said like racism is a white people problem and healing from racism is our problem. Mm -hmm. Um, And because like, there's not much, that like we can't do anything to change the system. It is people right. like Kevin who have to change this. Like, how can Marshall change the system? He can right. speak on it and he can talk about the ways that he's navigated and that's important. I don't want to like, um, I don't want to take away the ways that we can make those impacts. But when it comes to the decision makers to change that shit, it's people like Kevin, it's people, you know, it's them. Mm -hmm. It's like the dominant group. And so mm -hmm. I felt like that was a really important thing to name um, yeah. that, you know, People are like, y'all mad. Well, in the words of Solange, I got a lot to be mad about. <laughs> right. So. And I think it's the, that's the main issue with, you know, that we are struggling with in America is that America does not know what to do about the anger that we as Black Americans are dealing with. They don't mm -hmm. know whether or not, well, they know what we they know what we want, right? We want reparations, we want this, we want that. But they're like, I don't know if we should do that. Cause that definitely will harm them to an extent. Like how do you how do you atone for what has been done to a community without actually being able to accept that this might not benefit you to do it? Mm. Right? Um <laughs> And I think that's such a weird thing we would say because it actually does benefit. Like when it you would. up in like <laughs> systemic harm, it actually helps you. I wrote on this, right. um, and now we're and then we, we I promise we won't stay on this too long. But yeah. I wrote for this uh this congressional report called Black Women Best. Um, and it's like the framework is like if you saw for black women, you saw for everyone. And so yeah, there are people who are like uh, adopting the framework or like people we have to talk to and there's always when you go to the room it's always like some people who are like preach right like this is exactly it and there are some people who are like mm, I don't know about this and so I was like speaking about it once on a panel and then afterwards this guy came to me he was like well he basically was like well what about white men and so people around me were kind of like uh -huh, like you know roll their eyes so I was like I'm actually glad you asked me that because that's important mm -hmm. And like a lot of times, like you would have gone home and been like, these these black girls came in here talking about this framework that had nothing to do with me, and then I wouldn't have had an a opportunity to explain exactly what it yeah. has to do with you. And so well, then we the talk. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'll, no, finish your thought, and then I'll I'll go ahead. Oh, but yeah, so we talked about it, and we talked it out. I was like, okay, so I wrote on like the policing piece, right? Um, and we I t and like all of the things are not like you need to let black people out of jail, right? Like that wasn't what the what was written. It was like bail reform, actually about abolishing bail. But like, it was like all of these things around like improving communities and like investing in mental health, investing in like financial health. Um, and, and like, he was like, oh, I didn't realize that you didn't just mean this for black people you meant mm -hmm. this like as a I was like right the point is that when you just talk about something for people who are already doing well then like you miss the point but if you talk mm -hmm. about solving for everyone then you will also do better but mm -hmm. like so like e like these systemic problems don't just hurt us they hurt everybody and we don't get to talk about that enough because we are constantly pitted against each other. So I also mm -hmm. did appreciate them not, I mean, it's important to talk about Black issues, but I appreciate that they brought in like the full expansiveness of Black people because Black people are queer. Black people have mental health problems. Like they brought in the full expansiveness of Black people and didn't just say this one sliver of Black people. And I thought that was a really important conversation. Yeah. 
And the only, and this will be my last thought on this. The only issue which I was, I was alluding to was that in America, that we have a problem with the idea of actually serving everyone, serving the low income, serving um, all of society. And, and it, because it, what it does is it inches us closer to what's the big bad S word, socialism. <laughs> and we can't have that in capitalist America. <laughs> no, we can't, we can't be taking care of everybody. You on your own. We'll provide you with the opportunity to excel, but you're on your own. At least half of our political sphere thinks that way. Um, the other half, we're more like, than Let's half. Take care. Yeah, more than half. Um, the rest of us are trying to be like, no, we got to take care of each other. But yeah. Yeah. But let's move back to GH. <laughs> wait he's i just always i will never stop laughing at us being starting this podcast like you know we have political backgrounds we're not gonna really get political we're like um be a socialist <laughs> and it's hard because when you have a, a great show a program that does tackle issues like this it's hard not to go off on a tangent mm -hmm. because yeah. what they're really trying to do is reflect how life is and not only tell a great story, but really try to make a difference in the stories that they tell. So yeah, it, you can't blame yeah. us, y'all. I'm sorry, but you can't because it's or blame us. fault. <laughs> right. Oh, you can. That's fine. <laughs> but I think that like that's the other piece of um there are sometimes like shows that that like cater to or pander to people and they're like mm -hmm. oh well what is the thing our audience can handle versus right. being like soaps have always been the place that have like pushed boundaries and mm -hmm. how do we say this is actually we are now on the right side of things and we're gonna bring our audience along with us and I think that that's like a really interesting balance and I'm interested to see how they continue to balance that out as they tell stories. We can actually, mm -hmm. let's talk about Craze. Um, we didn't see yeah. this week, uh, but we did see Christina. We saw, I thought it was very funny that they made Sunny be like top LGBTQ parent of the year <laughs> while everybody else was dragging him. <laughs> it was like this very interesting juxtapose. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, that is hilarious again but again it shows the dichotomy of sunny as a character yeah because here we are hating the fact that he's this mob gangster but he's actually the most caring and wonderful parent that there is right now well to christina <laughs> to christina and so you're like should i hate this or should i have him thrown in like or should i love him for loving christina like that's crazy Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's other like you know it's funny because I I sometimes get annoyed I will say with Christina uh, and her constant sunny defending but I'm also like oh yeah I actually forgot how like Christina has always been judged by everybody except for Sunny funny. yeah he's always held it down for her and right. Though I, I really do enjoy Kate Nancy. I, I, I liked Lexi a whole lot. I think she was great. Um, and I think that Kate Nancy has just seamlessly stepped into this role. So even when she was like telling the story of how Sunny behaved when she came out, it was almost like she was there. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't yeah. it didn't feel awkward. Do you remember right. the, the scene when she came out to Sunny? I'm not like top of mind but I do remember feeling like she was super nervous about it she was just like I know this is going to be the toughest thing convincing my dad to be okay with me and he was just like you know it was, I remember him just accepting it and moving on I don't remember the joke where he said you don't think I like no gay people I don't <laughs> specifically remember but it does sound like something he would say you know mm -hmm. and so I remember it being a, a good experience for her versus what she was expecting it to be. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. That. I remember Morgan, that's like the one that it, that sticks out to me because he what? was like, everybody experiments in college. <laughs> and she was like, I don't think that that's what I'm saying to you. Or right. um, like Sam, when uh, she told her, she's, I think Sam was like, 
she had told him about Parker. If I'm it, correct yeah. me in the comments if I'm wrong, but she had oh. told Sam about Parker, but didn't tell her Parker was a woman. And oh, so when right. Sam found out, that, she was too. like, yeah. "Why are you telling me that's the most interesting part, girl?" <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so she has been like, I remember her like talking to Lucas about it. Ugh, I miss Lucas, mm -hmm. but like talking to Lucas about it. So she has been you know, had, like, family members who really, really cared about her, which, on the mm -hmm. flip side, Blaze has not. So, yeah. I, I, mm, they calmed down some of Maria Santos' homophobia. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was good. And I, I did like the stuff with her, Sonia and Christina. Yeah. There's a lot of comments about the chemistry between um, Sonny yeah. and, yeah, you're like, no. I will not have it. <laughs> will not have it. Will not have it though. <laughs> like, no. No. Absolutely no. not. Will not have it. <sighs> uh, well, you never know. <laughs> you do never know. You never know where this where the story is going to take it. Um, but yeah, new writers, gotta... we don't know them yet, so we don't know where they're going okay. with stuff. Right, but I mean, they had a, at least a, a rapport. How about say that <laughs> when they are having a conversation? So we'll see. They do, they do. I do yeah. like re I do like reviewing that history though, because I was like, yeah. and I was sad because like you know it's a different Christina, so you couldn't do the flashbacks. But right. um, and I, but I do wish that they were like more readily available online. Like YouTube is just hard because so much yeah uh, copyright stuff has hit stuff, but. Yeah. It was a good story and I feel like I'm glad that Christina had that and I'm glad that's the story they told for Christina. Yeah. yeah. Not Parker. I didn't like that story. But <laughs> the support she had from her family. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Um Trina and Ava, very, very, very short scene. Very. Um, that I was sad about. I was sad that it was short. I was sad that it was short. I was sad that there was not a lot of scenes about Trina. Again, speaking to what we keep harping on over and over and over again, they keep sidelighting her. Because um, I think I think she would have a lot of point of view to add to the story. Um, but we didn't see her hardly at all. Um, yeah, why wasn't she with Black Hospital with Kevin? Right. <laughs> you, you just you just went. It was, it was like look around. Everybody go mute. Challenge. I'm just um, like, yeah, yeah. I so I will say that I thought I I love anytime anybody loses any comments. And so someone had left us a comment on Instagram that I thought was really interesting, which was like, um, why do we get to see all of this like Jocelyn point of view without seeing um, Trina point of view? And I have like mm -hmm. and I so I I said one thing specifically, but I really it made me think of two things. So one, it was like, I, you know, I was thinking about where does Trina naturally fit? Like, where does she naturally fit that we can like grow? And mm -hmm. so I don't even pit like Jocelyn and Christina, Christina, jo uh, Jocelyn and Trina against each other for that. I actually wondered why do we have to get all of that Nina? Because that scene was actually between Ava and Trina and they were talking. And so the, mm -hmm. the better question, is, as opposed to like, why does Jocelyn get this point of view, is why does Nina get all of this point of view? And why did she disrupt this like thing that should have been a natural conversation? So that was like the first thing I thought. And then the other thing I thought about is just like, and we talked about this last week, but this is mob hospital. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so even Jocelyn, not even Jocelyn's point of view is dictated by the story that they are telling about Sunny. Mm -hmm. And I don't want her to get like pigeonholed in a lot of the ways I feel like Michael has, which is that Michael's stories have always been about Sunny, Carly, and Jason. Those are like the stories that Michael tells. And so they can't fully develop him or give him the story he deserves because mm -hmm. they're always figuring out how it 
how it impacts these other three. Even when you think mm -hmm. about the like reveal around Wiley being his son, that was about Carly. She was the one who like went up and it was like whatever. Um, so it's I'm I, I I'm hoping that these say the right these new sets of writers don't let that same thing be true for Jocelyn. Because the reason we see Jocelyn more than Trina is because Jocelyn's story is directly tied to like mom mom. Possibly. Mom, so yeah. they need to one make sure that Trina like I, like I don't know where she like that she has places that she naturally plugs in and that those places are fully fleshed out because there was no reason that what that patheticness of whatever Nina was talking about interrupted Trina and Ava mm -hmm. um and I feel like that part is like how she also gets sidelined because that's why I always talk about how we have to we have to advocate for black stories overall instead of just story for Trina because black story overall gives Trina more story. Yeah. I agree. So no notes. I didn't like <laughs> it. <laughs> I, okay. didn't, I, I did not like it. I did laugh though, um, when Ava was like, Trina said her painting was fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness! Really, really oh, funny. Man. That's so fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like that was definitely an ad lib. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Alexis might be a lawyer again, so Diane is working through all these loopholes. Um, what did you feel about the Alexis and Molly scene? The Alexis and Molly scene was the only part that interested me in Alexis being a lawyer again you know I want her to be a lawyer again but I kind of want them to be like some miracle happened behind the scenes and then now she's a lawyer because I don't want to dwell on it too much right, right but the whole um Molly scene actually did add a new layer to it that I for totally forgot about that yes um Alexis was uh raging alcoholic and <laughs> she and it is something that yes the family needs to be concerned about um I don't think she was an alcoholic because she was a lawyer she she was an alcoholic for others she turned to alcohol because she's a mess she was in a problem she was a mess she was in a problematic relationship and it drove her crazy it mm -hmm. wasn't her being a lawyer that did it so right. I'm, I'm a little unclear as to why Molly thinks that just because she becomes a lawyer again she's going to turn to alcohol um, I think, uh, but I think it was also just the drama of the, of getting her lawyer, her law degree rein, or law license reinstated. I think that's what Molly was thinking. But in any case, yes, um, I like that they're bringing up the alcoholism again. Um, I thought it was a, a good conversation, but, you know, again, I'm still not that invested in new Molly, new, 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 new Molly, but um yeah, it was okay. I, was, yeah. I mean, I you know again, I don't want to, I don't want to dwell too much on Alexis and her lawyer journey. I just want her to be a lawyer and have it be done with. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> I I I thought that that actress. I'm I'm also not invested in her. Um, mm -hmm. I thought she did a good job with the material, <clears throat> right. even though I didn't care about it. But I thought she did a good job. It was very watchable. Yes. Um, yes. And that's not a shady. I mean, I didn't, I didn't mean that in a shady way. It was beyond watchable. It was, she did a really good job with this. Good scene. job, yeah. So I think that for me, I also one hundred percent agree with you on let's just get it done. If we can flip character like perspective in the same way that we did like Joss and Anna in one day and Dex in one day, then we can certainly just say off screen we had this thing happen. You know, right. Julian and Julian and Britt are liars. I love that they are like slandering <laughs> dead people. <laughs> it's like the slander, and I was like, "Well, yeah, they were liars." They were but I'm just like the disrespect. <laughs> but, so, yeah. like, yeah, you know, fine, it's fine with me. Take it off. You know, who cares? <laughs> That's just how I feel. Like, give right. it to her. Who cares? Um. Let's talk about the Jason stuff. Because okay. that is, I think, a lot of what I felt was very, very slow walk this week. And I was surprised by it. 
Um, so we got Willow being scared of the feds. We got Danny getting close to Jason. Um, we got Jason turning himself in. Um, Danny handling the feds like a pro. Right. He was, he was like, I'm so sorry, Sam. I was very proud. Why yeah. would I? Why would I see him? I barely know the guy. Right. Mm. Danny. <laughs> So good. I loved it. <laughs> and you know, so much. It just made and it made Jasper just seem even more sleazy. And even like when Brooklyn called him out, he's like, "Okay, tell everyone I'm sorry." He didn't even seem sincere in that. And no. I'm just like, dude, you just you're horrible. Um, but yeah, it was a little slow week for you know Jason. Um. But I have to give it up to, like, I almost feel like maybe GH just kind of wanted to end on a cliffhanger because that was a cliffhanger. Not the fact that Jason really turned himself in because we kind of felt like it was going to happen. But the way that, you know, Diane and Jason walked into the, <laughs> the police station, I was like, hey, yeah, he's home. Is it. He's <laughs> home. Finally. I loved it. It. I love the the power, the aloofness, but the knowing that he, he like he said it. I think in a like his last word to Diane was, "I'm not going to be here long." I mean, but still, classic Jason, stoic, stony. You know, whatever. I'm here. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna break me. Whatever. <laughs> I loved it, and mm -hmm. the contrast between him and Chase. He made Chase look like a little boy. I'm sorry. Chase was Chase. trying his hardest to be <laughs> mad and look at him and be like, <laughs> Jason was just like, <laughs> Chase, like, sweetie. Like, no. No. You're, this, is, this is not, you're, no. <laughs> you cannot match this man. <laughs> Don't even try. Um, but he was all in his feelings about Dante, I guess. But he made him look so small. It was so funny. I was like, Chase, please, you're embarrassing me. Stop. Like like a little like a little chihuahua going up to a great day and talking about <laughs> <laughs> Diane was like, okay, well, let's not even play around like this. You know you're gonna let me in here. <laughs> um, yes. I will also say Willow, the one of the first times she was actually interesting to me was when she was mobbing. And so for her to like backtrack like that, I said. She got scared. She did, but so here's what I'm wondering, and I'm sure that this I know this is not an original thought. How in the world does the hospital track antibiotics, but not the fentanyl that Dex was gonna shoot Cyrus up with? What are we oh talking my God. about here? I did not even make that connection, but I'm glad. <laughs> what like, are we talking about? Have, they didn't even. Have, they could have done it. They could have said, you know what? We've had a couple of instances where you know we were missing fentanyl or all this other stuff. Maybe we should be concerned about those antibiotics. But they didn't even make that connection. No, that is crazy. Unless you know, behind the scenes, Dex goes back and puts the fentanyl back. But either way, like, your fentanyl case was open. Your street drugs mm -hmm. were easy to access right. by some dude who's walking around in scrubs who shouldn't be there. That, yeah, that's but always... That the always antibiotics are out. like, who cares? Yeah. It always trips me out that people can just roll around up in that hospital with some scrubs and no one be like, who are you? Who the hell are you? the hell are you <laughs> like it's crazy to me i just <laughs> i was also confused by like the way liz was talking to aiden it was like the monologuing they had her do i was like this yeah. is your son <laughs> what's happening here it was so weird that writing was really weird and again, why wasn't Jake there? Like he, she was talking about how she was going to talk to Jake. She should have just been Aiden. talking to Jake. To Aiden, she should have just been talking to Jake. I will say, when my LNL two baby walked up, I said, "Why is he a giant? He feels like he's grew." I'm like, 
like like my baby's all grown <laughs> like he just he's so grown now i was like he looks bigger than he did when he was in the kitchen talking to laura or talking to um when he came out to liz when they were oh, baking yeah. together yeah was that a year ago like why is this baby no so i don't think, know i don't, was, I don't I know, think was it was it? a year ago but you know teenage boys they be sprouting up really fast i wasn't ready yeah i was they, not ready like next time. Week, yeah it's it's actually really kind of shocking how fast they when they go through their growth spurt it's just like well it's crazy that growth spurt really hit my baby because I said, what's going on here? <laughs> like, oh my God. He should be girl. all of he should be all of 12 and still be hella tall. <laughs> That's how boys are. And then they That's don't true. grow again. They don't grow again until they're 25. It's That's weird. True. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um <laughs> yeah, but I was so happy to see Aiden. I'm looking forward to seeing Jake um as well. Um, and it just really does feel like Jason's return has brought all the kids back to the canvas. Um, so keep it up. I really, really do enjoy that. Um, yeah. But, oh, yeah, but BLQ being protective of Danny. It was just, again, the quarter mainness of it. Yeah. I think that Tracy being back really pushes BLQ to be more of the Q. Um, yeah. But I loved it. She was like, uh, boy, we are rich. And she didn't tell him, don't commit crime. That was not what right. she said to him. She said, we are yeah. rich, okay? You better call our lawyer. And she's like, he's like, what about yeah. Diane? Don't be calling this damn mob lawyer. He, call one of the quarterman lawyers. Okay, we're rich. It, it was hilarious. She's like, don't be improvising with the police. Don't be telling them anything. That's a true thing. I wrote it down. The <laughs> quote was, what what I wrote on the quote? Do not freestyle with the cops. With the cops, yeah. Unless it's, freestyle, <laughs> unless it's Chase. Unless it's Chase. I'm sorry. Don't trust none of them unless it's Chase. <laughs> Brooklyn said a cab is set for my bay. <laughs> and she was funny. She, and like he was like, I don't have a phone. I get credit. Okay, I would do something old fashioned. Write it down. <laughs> and commit it to memory. Because you all, we all, we do need that. Because frankly, if I don't have my phone, I, I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm still stuck on Willow. You know, when she, I liked her when she seemed down, now she get on my nerve. And I will say, here's the other <laughs> part of it. She was, she was, she wasn't wrong. Right. And I, and I hated it. <laughs> Juxtapose that with when Liz was holding Esme in the tower. She wasn't right, but I loved it. <laughs> so maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> right. I still think she's still um Bobby in the making and maybe she's just coming to terms with it and she's scared. But you know, the more incidences that she's involved in, the more um she'll get accustomed to it. She's still new. She's still new new. So. I do not believe she's gonna be my Barbara Jean because you know Bobby was you know, messy. She was. But Bobby was messy from the get. Willow's just learning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to that time Bobby threw that drink in Nina's face. That was everything Bobby did. I still For real. can't get over. I still cannot get over that scene with Laura knocking on the door and talking about, I want to talk to Scotty. Bobby's like, Woo. well, he's occupied right now. A queen. A messy queen. queen. Yeah, <laughs> that was like what 30 40 years ago. Ugh, right, lover, lover. That was amazing. <laughs> um, so deception, I alluded to this up top. Me being team Lucy. Um, <laughs> so basically, Sasha was at a photo shoot and they was like, that she's not edgy enough. Um, and Sasha and uh Cody have quit being the face of deception, the faces of deception. Um, Maxie is pissed. <laughs> I have to say, it's, I mean, as much as I enjoyed Lucy telling Cody how worthless he is, I was <laughs> just like, what are you doing, Lucy? Just like alienating everyone. And I know you're team Lucy, and I get it that Lucy started a company 
and it is her baby, and she's having a hard time letting it go. But man, pissing off Maxie, just you know, I was like, really? Is that what you're gonna do? Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, what? I have a whole bunch of WTFs in my notes for this week. First, it was for Dex, then it was for all the stuff, and now I'm like, Lucy, I'm like, what the hell? Actually, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's Sunday um so um yeah it was like I was more on the side of everyone else than I was on Lucy's side um but yeah she seemed to be alienating everybody and maybe again maybe it's for the plot maybe they're really trying to have Max to go back to Crimson and they just need to have Maxie have enough of a reason to do so but yeah I wasn't appreciating Lucy this week and normally I do normally I enjoy her and her shenanigans but this week i wasn't yeah i think <laughs> um i think the interesting thing is i think most people were uh yeah. not pro lucy for yeah. me i think it's heavy-handed i think that they are leaning too far on like the fact that lynn's not there enough and that lucy's right. kind of erotic but i saw her point to everything um yeah and it does not sit well with me that maxi is not more mad at blq I feel like that was such a missed opportunity for a rivalry and for like some drama to just settle it. Um, Uh I I just didn't even, we started off with Spinelli, like giving them the rundown on it and they had to do it because of what Brooklyn did. Right. (laughs) So yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like what are you talking but about? But they made it more. But they made it more about Tracy than they made it about Brooklyn, right? And, and she's Tracy the one who like, did it. Yeah, but Tracy was like, "Oh, it's because why? Because someone can sell a secret or something." <laughs> and it was more like Tracy is the mastermind behind that versus Brooklyn was the one that actually did the work. Um, so and it was done because she wanted to like get her boyfriend a job it wasn't even like compelling so maxi is ongoingly broke like she is she is still feeling the impacts of what brooklyn did and instead and so like it makes sense to me why lucy doesn't want them around i get it i understand tracy is funny i'm not i haven't you know i think it's i i love all of these characters so it's not like i'm like they did this, this to lucy so therefore i don't like brooklyn and Tra- like it's not like that but i just mm. saw everywhere that tracy was coming from even when people were mad like when she went up the contract i'm like she's a businesswoman part of the problem mm-hmm. with this job is that y'all thought y'all were closer than what you were right so why would she trust any of these people so no mm. sasha and cody because you mad about something you can't just roll out what you mean this is a contract it's your <laughs> job. like what are you this is what are you like, is she supposed to not say it? Now, yeah. I thought I thought the plot was stupid because they basically was like, well, since Sasha and I don't drugs no more, like, it's just as hard <laughs> to, like, get the shot we need. Like, that's mm-hmm. ridiculous, but I was just like, no, I, I get it. Like, she fell off. She lost her company trying to play friends with y'all. Right. I'm also a little concerned, um, and you're right. I mean, Sasha, she didn't look like she was bullied out of the job. She was making an affirmative decision that she wanted to move in a different direction in her life. My worry is that this, what this means for her in terms of story. Me like, does this, like, does this mean that we will only see Sasha and relationship to Cody or Nina? And I was like, boo! Because I didn't want that. And so, um, I'm I don't know if this means that, you know, Sasha or that maybe the actress is going to be on recurring now or something. I don't know, but, you know. I will say, I would love to have two new faces of deception. Blaze and Trina. That would be, yeah, that would be interesting. It would give her something to do. It would give it, yeah. Story. She's cute. Yeah. She take pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. um, we know Tapiana's like gorgeous and like very photogenic. Um, it would give her new people to be around. It kind of expand who she's already with. It's a natural yeah. place to have story. Um, yeah, I would love to see uh, see. I mean, I don't think it'll happen, but you know, me putting out there, I would love to see Trina as the face of deception. <laughs> 
<laughs> um yeah so that's right um drew and nina oh my goodness uh, again that well was i guess it's like drew that... valentine and nina because there was a that valentine and nina scene too i don't know i kind of felt like the valentine scene was a little negligible because i didn't really pay too much attention to it um but the you know that was another WTF moment for me it's like why is Ryan Lavery trying to appeal to Nina <laughs> I mean and she and my second sentence was like she ain't got no humble N-O capital N-O humble bone in her body absolutely none and I was just trying to figure out why after so many weeks of him being like I can't forgive her I'm going to destroy her I'm doing this I'm doing that that he's now going and knocking on her door talking about do you want to you want crimson back what the hell i don't get it and I, i'm just like Ugh, are they just trying to chem test him with everybody <laughs> i don't get it um but it was i mean it was interesting but i don't understand what his motivation is um at all yeah so. i have been feeling like Everybody has been trying to be extra sparkly with each other recently. <laughs> like, so what is actually happening here? Um, right. You know, like, it was like Jordan and Drew. And then I saw like a spark. And I'm sure Cameron Matheson probably like enjoys working with Cynthia. And so maybe that's what we saw. But there was like a smile he did. And like, yeah. I was like, what y'all doing here? Right. Right. Where I did not see a spark. And I know that this could be just because in my deep heart, I'm a hater. I did not see a, any spark between Valentine and Nina. None. Zero spark. Oh, yeah. That's negative why spark. I was like, it was kind of negligible. I just like, I didn't, you know. Now, like, Ugh. again, in the, in, the, in the deepest parts of my heart, I'm a hater. I'm very clear about being a hater. Um, and Valentine, you're dead to me. And you're not going to be not dead to me until you do right by Anna. So, whatever. Yeah. I think um, JSP and um, JPS. <laughs> and Finola, they had a they had an event where they were talking about whether or not they would get back together. Um, they were kind of jokey-jokey about it, so... I don't know. I feel like it's still not off the table. Better so, not be. We'll see. But he, <laughs> but he, he's dead to me, and so he do right by her. So we'll see. Uh, but I did not feel it. I will say the dragging of Sunny made me laugh. That was good. And that was in, funny. inadvertently, him dragging Sona, he said to her, and I wrote this down: in order for you to fall in love with Sunny, he had to completely forget who he was. <laughs> I would like to flip that as well. In order for right. him to fall in love with you, he had to not know anything about you, your history, or his family. Exactly. I, again, was telling you, aside from all my children, I was just, like, re-watching the Return from Nixon Fall stuff. And I was just like, this was so poorly done, and I cannot believe that they tried to write this as a love story. I don't know if something's going to happen with Sona, but I kind of think that's over. And it was never, I, I mean, hope it is over. I never enjoyed it again. You know, I just need to be preface this by saying I'm a, I was a hater. Absolutely. Yeah. I have no like, opinion. because sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to see both sides of this. I don't want to see both sides of this. I only see one side of that, the hating side of Sona. <laughs> but I just like felt like it was never good. It never made sense. The story was never for me believable and it actually you know ruined i never liked nina but it definitely mm -hmm. dragged her character down and it ruined parts of sunny's character for me because the point yeah. of sunny's character was always he's done all these awful things but he stands by his family right and this was like not that at all so, so yeah you know um but yeah so drew I actually hate him be like, well, I fired Carly. Don't come up in here talking about him on my girl to oh girl. No, yes. And I think he he tried to redeem himself. He's like, there's nothing that you can do to make me talk negatively about Carly. But he did. He said, I fired her. And I was just like, 
Why is she she quit. Why, why, you're such a traitor. She quit. And she, but he did admit she never wanted the job. But she quit. Mm-hmm. Sir. I also don't understand why they have Nina looking so dumb. Like not being able to find a passcode. This is a person, hate it or love it, who ran Crimson and made it extremely successful. What you mean mm-hmm. she can't find a password? What you mean no, she really no. bad at this newspaper thing? She's also a person who just stepped into, like the way they wrote is that she just stepped into the Metro Court and was able to do it. She's able to win right. over the staff. She was able to do all, like, so why is she in in the invader looking like a ditz? I don't, ugh, anyway. I feel like I've, you know, you can go back into the archives of my Nina hate. There's not too much extra, I have to say. I just, I <laughs> <laughs> oh another quote from valentine talking about sunny he's not complicated he's just erratic <laughs> damn what are you just in a safe house valentine <laughs> right <laughs> damn, it's funny people. it's funny because he's the one that dragged him into this whole you know arms dealing thing too. sure did <laughs> oh um you know and I'm really curious about that. Like, how does Valentine play into that whole thing? Um, I think it like is Jason really involved in that, or I don't know. We still don't really know the whole um, story um, behind Jason and you know the whole murder thing. Right. Um, but we'll see. We'll we'll hopefully we'll learn. Um, but yeah, I have an interesting comment when we get into previews. Ooh. Um, well, that's all I really um have for this week. I do want to shout out also little Donna. Well, that was, was adorable. Hot takes. <laughs> oh yeah. Get that baby out of the PCPD. The <laughs> propaganda this week, the propaganda <laughs> of all the weeks has been off the charts. If I that... ever found out that my child, my niece, my nephew went to the police station. And got badges for. You can look me up. You know how I feel about the police. Go ahead, please. Sorry, Sonia. I I would just I would say that would be my only other critique about Dante being in a hospital because we get to hear about oh my god he's such a wonderful cop and he's a cop this and cop that and cop cop cop. That is again my critique. He needs to wake up so we can get on with our lives. But I do want to shout out little Donna, even if so she was in a police police station she is adored love her that's all why donna classroom more diverse than the entire city of port charles i'm talking about <laughs> donna's classroom was a rainbow coalition i said who these kids come from who these black kids where are your families at right <laughs> right it was like legitimately they were like all the bring it's like Captain Planet up in here, bring all the races together to meet Donna's classroom <laughs> and take them to get deputized at the police station. Disgusting. Hated it. <laughs> so Yeah. Uh, talk, about, talk, talk about black general hospital. Where who are these parents? Are these kids? Where are, who are these at? kids' parents? <laughs> I surely would not have signed that permission slip. Uh, take my kid. You can take my kid to the fire department, police station. Lost your mind up in here. Anyway, any other hot takes before we get into the previews? <laughs> uh, um, um, no, I think that was it. My last comment was still laughing out loud at Chase, trying to look hard against Jason. <laughs> Nobody believed you, Chase. Nobody believed you. Oh, nobody believed it. I'm still laughing. <laughs> All right. Next week, let's get into it. Monday. Jason tells the story. Elizabeth is overcome with emotion. Stella comforts Trina. Michael is cautious. Jake is furious. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, I posted uh, every Friday or something, GH um, posts like a, a preview scene. Shout out to Rachel, who is queen goat of everything. Um, 
keeper of spreadsheets, keeper of videos. Um, and so she uh, ripped it and um, so that she were, so that I was able to post it without uh, commercials. Um, and it's Joss and Trina. And Trina is confronting Joss about her relationship with Jason. Um, I, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago because we were like, well, what happens when Trina realizes that Jason, um, you know, like may have had something to do with Curtis's shooting? I um, mean, so that's right. that's the confrontation. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we we shall see. Um, I mean, oh, we forgot to mention Joss being like, does Jason kill people? I'm, I can't drag my girl no more. I can't drag my girl no more. But that was ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Tuesday. Wait. Anna is stunned. Carly is determined to get to Jason. Ava comforts Sunny. Mm. Uh, I wonder if I wonder if that's how she's helping Nina get him back. By yeah, him I think in the hospital. I I was like, that's the only way that, you know, Sona is going to continue in the sense of Nina asking Ava to help her and Ava getting her chance to actually get closer. <laughs> I think that's the only Sona conversations we're going to have right now. Yep. Uh, Curtis is suspicious. Gregory's symptoms become more pronounced. Whew. Um, Wednesday. Sam and Jason come face to face. I think it's going to be at the PCPD, which is Obviously. like an echo, an echo to the first time that they met. Oh, I can't wait for these things. Um, Danny and Jake argue. Um, oh. Anna, Anna offers a surprising proposal to Dex. I think he's about to go be a professional snitch. I hate to see it. Um, Trina makes a heartbreaking confession. Brooklyn shares a message. So we're going to get a little bit more Trina next week. Yay. Um, Thursday. Tempers fly at Jason's arraignment. Carly and Alexis are surprised. Sonny has his doubts. Sam gets more hope. So hopefully it's about Dante waking up. Nina is insistent. Friday. Jason meets with Sonny. Ava and Sonny... <laughs> Ava and Sunny have a close moment. Anna learns some important information. Valentine makes arrangements. Olivia, Danny, and Rocco rush to Dante's bedside. Yeah. Hopefully he's waking up. <laughs> Hopefully. But that's the week. Okay, here's my, like, the preview scenes that they showed on Friday. Mm -hmm. Jagger being like, what the hell are you doing here? So, and he was in the interrogation room. So again, hopefully we find out a little bit more about what's going on between Jagger and Jason, but there's definitely something afoot. Jason just turning himself in, knowing that he won't be there long. That's like, I think something to do with Jagger. I think Jagger yeah. wanted, Jagger wanted to be the person to catch Sonny, or I feel like Jagger wanted to be the person to catch Jason. So we can spirit Jason away somewhere right. and everyone can still continue to hate Jason. But I think J Jason turning himself in kind of ends whatever arrangement that Jagger has in some sort mm. of way. So um, it's going to, I don't know what the details are, but that's my feeling. I think Jason wants out of the murder game and he's going to out Jagger in some kind well, of way. The federal murder game. The federal murder, <laughs> the mercenary game. The mercenary game. Yes. Well, we shall see. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Thank we you for see. joining us. Thank you for staying the whole time with us. Um, yeah, that's really it. Thank you for shifting. Thank you for shifting. Like, subscribe, comment, share, tell your friends about us. We yeah. appreciate you, and we'll see you next week. Yes. Thank you to all who commented about um, my my journey this year. I really appreciate all of your support. Bye. -bye.